I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Maserati Rick in Detroit Convertible bird in Miami Graduated summa cum laude Strip club made a tsunami Carlton Hines with the ball game Grateful Edmonds with the snowflakes Craig Pettis in the M-Town Sal Magluta with the boat game Falcon with the cocaine Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game Like Monster Cody in South Central Larry Davis from Close Range No, but what happened was It was just, it was just this man by the name of John Pop Freeman Right? Uh-huh. Pop, Pop was the guy that owned the Super Red down like two blocks from my house. Okay. And Pop ran all the numbers and he ran all the dope. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't know all that. I was too young, I was like 12 years old. Oh. So I just walked to the store and he used to get me to clean up the store for him, you know, do all that crazy stuff. And um, wipe the bottles down and, and, and the shelves, all that type of stuff. Just to earn a few dollars. Yeah. So one year I, I was I was doing, I kept coming, I was store for him. He sit in the back. He had a, a, a three piece suit on with a diamond lion head on. He wow. wore that every day. Like he was about sixty something years old, but he was dapper. You know wow. what I mean? Uh-huh. And what I learned later on in the years, matter of fact, before that, he said he could, he talked like, like like hey boy was you know what I mean like that. And he said where your coat at? And I ain't had no coat. You know what uh-huh. I mean? The shit was rough at the crib. Okay. So he, I said I got one. And he said um you put on a lot of money. You put on getting three hundred dollars. No forget it. He said go buy your coat. Damn. And I went and bought a coat. And um and from there I just fell in love with the money and fell in love with him. And he just had me just doing all the stuff in the store, going get his food and like, doing different stuff. Little but stuff. The premium used to come pay homage to him. Oh. I was his man, like I was, I was cleaning up. Oh, you was just, was, you was, was just in there. Yeah, I was, I was in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Up a pop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But all the old gates and all the other guys coming to meet him to, to say hi to him. You know what I mean? Because he was some, because he was somebody in Queens. Yeah, he was somebody. He was somebody in, in the world. Damn. His funeral was on the news. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Damn. He was with the Gambino. Wow. Right? What happened was he had got knocked. He never told. He never snitched. So they gave him Queens. They gave him Queens. They think he bonds him at home. They gave Pop Queens. Wow. Pop turned Queens out. Wow. So you he know? was he. So pretty much he was he would be the equivalent to Nicky Barnes was in Harlem, just like you just said. That's right. Damn. That's right. See, like a lot, a lot of dudes, a, a, a lot of dudes don't. Don't know that. You feel me? Yeah. Google, I never yeah. I never even heard of him. I never heard of him. What's his name? I know you said Pop. Google him. Google him. John. First name is John. Uh huh. Middle name Pop. Uh huh. Last name Freeman. 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 Yo, yo. We back. It's your boy Pop a lot. Mob gang. We on our way to NYC with it. Headshot City. We gonna start off and make some traction in Harlem. But everything is really going to kick off in Queens. Now, if any of y'all know anything about Queens, New York, it is home to some of the most memorable, not only drug dealers, but drug gangs that the nation has ever seen with the likes of Fat Cat Nichols, the Fatato Brothers, the Supreme Team. And the person that we're covering today is arguably... Well, not even arguably. The person that we're covering today is pretty much going to be the architect of that. And based on my research, what I would call the last chain that linked the drug chain in the streets and the mafia. And that person that I'm talking about is going to be none other than John Pop Bassett. Now, we really couldn't tell this story without delving back circa the 1970s because it's going to be right in around that time, according to a lot of high quality sources, Bimmy included, that it would be right around this time between 1960 and 1970 that Pops Freeman would be handed the territory of Queens by the Mafia During the course of my research, I read some places that he decided to move his operation from Harlem to the Queens area. In the audio clip prior, you would hear Bimmy talk about how Pops Freeman would have a connection to the Gambino crime family. 
While doing my research for this episode, I stumbled across a book titled NYPD, The City and Its Police, written by two gentlemen, James Laidner and Thomas Rapetto. Now, in this 400-page book that was written back in 2001, they go into detail that how in the 70s, that it would be the Genovese crime family that would put Pops Freeman in charge of the drug operations in Southeast Queens. Now, in that same book, on page 288, they were going to say that the Genovese crime family looked at Pops Freeman as one of their black lieutenants. Now, when I thought about that a little bit deeper, if anybody knows anything or even a little bit about the mafia, they know about their hardline stance on drugs. Now, for those that don't know, I'm not sure how it is now, but at one time, the mafia had a hands-off policy with drugs, meaning no mafia member families were to deal in any kind of drugs. And some people might ask why that is. And I'm not sure how I came to the theory, if somebody told me or if I came to it on my own, but I determined that they figured out that when you're dealing with drugs, that leads to people testifying against other people due to the amount of time that they can give you for drugs. So I'm thinking that's one reason why they decided to have a hands-off policy with drugs, even though they were very, very lucrative, because it could be a death sentence. If you look at the case of John Gotti, for instance, the death of Paul Castellano was for Gotti to probably take over the mob, but for more than that, or just importantly, he was worried about some audio tapes that had been floating around that showed that some members of his crew had been dealing drugs and had that come to light, it could have resulted in a death sentence. And it actually did. It resulted in the death of Paul Castellano. Now, with that being said, if anybody knows the rules of the mafia, you can only be initiated into the mafia if you are a full-blooded Italian. Now, Pops Freeman being an African-American, it got me wondering if he was specifically picked by the Genovese crime family due to the color of his skin and his separation from the mafia. That way, if anything ever went down, they could deny it. But nonetheless, Pop Freeman would operate in Queens up until his late 70s to right around the late 70s. And I've seen some places where it was in 1978 where he would go on to retire while his counterparts, guys like Nicky Barnes, would go on to rot in jail for a few years and end up testifying against members of the mafia, essentially, in order to get out of prison. And that brings me right to the take of this episode, because that goes to show you what being flashy can get you. Because Nicky Barnes, yet though flashy and very well known, would end up the target of the federal government and essentially get a long prison sentence where Pop Freeman is yet still unknown to this day in 2020. And he would go on to retire at the age of 70, where he would pass the drug operation from Ronnie Bumps Bassett right around the turn of that decade in 1978. I could not find an actual date, but I did see that he did pass away sometime in the 80s. I did see 1983 as a year, but I cannot say that for sure. But Pops Freeman was definitely a legend and one of the forefathers to the game and definitely deserves to be represented on this channel. Now, y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all get in the comment box below and let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we missed, what gangsters we need to cover. Y'all hit the red subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill is dropping. And I'm going to be back ASAP. Y'all know how I'm rocking. This shit got pop a lot. Mob gang.